Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. Well, Martinsville, Virginia brings out the truth serum for some NASCAR drivers. Eastern States weekend in Middletown, New York battled the elements again, and I've been through plenty of those in my day. And the Tri-Track Series had a wild finish in Seekonk, Massachusetts. We've got all this and more coming up. Welcome to Speedway Report Monday, October the 28th, from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. I'm Patrick Reynolds, and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel yet? Yes. Hit up Speedway Report on YouTube, and you'll have this podcast every week dropped right into your mailbox. Leo, our good friend in Brazil, he catches us on YouTube every week. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for watching once again. I'll try to do your uh, your work justice here and uh, make it worth your while to tune in each week. Let's start off with the victory lane lap and tell you who won what over the weekend. A lot of what we're going to talk about tonight happened off the track. Some on, but a lot of it off, as you well know. But let's uh, let's talk about who wound up in victory lane hoisting the trophies. Uh, the grandfather clock yesterday for the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series in Martinsville, Virginia, went to Martin Truex Jr. I think the second-place car is just crossing the line right now as he pretty much had his way with the field yesterday. The truck race on Saturday at Martinsville was won by Todd Gilliland. Yeah. A little bit more there, too. Uh, jumping up to NASCAR's West Series, the Crayon and Pro Series West, they went and ba- raced in Bakersfield, California on Saturday night where Derek Krauss won the 150 lapper. Formula One, hey, North American soil. I like it. They were in Mexico last week, or yesterday, rather. Uh, Lewis Hamilton was your winner. And this week, yes, they come to American soil. The United States Grand Prix rolls Sunday in Austin, Texas, the good old U.S. of A. World of Outlaw Sprints were in the Northeast. They raced Friday night at Port Royal, Pennsylvania, where Donnie Schatz took the A main. Saturday night was rained out at Port Royal, the doubleheader. There will be no makeup date. Next event on the World of Outlaw schedule is two weeks from now, right here in Charlotte. Uh, The Southern Modified Racing Series raced in Asheboro, North Carolina on Saturday night. John Smith won the series finale and the championship. An Eastern States weekend was held at the Orange County Fair Speedway in Middletown, New York. On Saturday night, the small block 150 was taken by Matt Williamson as he pairs that up with his big $100,000 show of Hundred grand to win show uh, back in August with the big blocks and the big block two hundred. Yesterday they suffered through a rain delay. Yesterday afternoon pushed the show to last night. Got done. The checkered flag waved about ten thirty or eleven o'clock last night. Stuart Friesen, winner of your Eastern States two hundred in Orange County, over Matt Shepard, Billy Decker, Danny Johnson, and Larry White. Following them, Jimmy Phelps, Tim Fuller. Uh, let's see. One Bob McCready, Tim McCready, uh, Billy Dunn, and Matt Williamson, who won the small block race, also finished 10th. Uh, Friesen, Stuart Friesen, my goodness, he started 44th on the grid and was able to make his way to victory lane. That rivals Jack Johnson's win in 1985, where I believe he started 45th and wound up uh, in victory lane, or pretty close to it. I was there that day, but it was a memory of a long time ago. Yeah, I'm old enough to remember 1985's Eastern States 200, where Jumpin' Jack came out of basically the parking lot to win the race. So great win last night for Stuart Friesen. And in Seekonk, Massachusetts, the Haunted 100 for the Tri-Track Modified Series has a crazy finish. Matt Hirschman crossed the line first, but Chase Dowling was awarded the victory after officials disqualified Hirschman. For his last corner of contact with Ronnie Silk, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Let's get to, like I said, a lot of off-track stuff garnered the headlines and the water cooler talk. Where do you guys want to start? I know where I want to start. Let's start with Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano. Great place to start when there's a wrestling match on pit road. I hate to see this type of stuff when I'm a fan, but when you host a podcast and a radio show, this stuff is gold. So 
yeah, uh, the race itself for Martinsville was very tame by their standards. But Logano and Hamlin had a run-in on the track during the race. Hamlin washed up on the inside of turn four, put Logano into the wall, caused a flat tire, caused a spin. We had a big problem and affected Logano's day coming from the back. And we had a duplicate uh, situation as the Xfinity Series race uh, the week before happened with uh, Tyler Reddick and Cole Custer. Here we are, the two guys on pit road. Uh, you want to talk? You want to bitch? You want to yell? You want to whine? Okay. Second verse, same as the first. I preached it last week. It's almost guy code. Forget NASCAR. Forget racing. Forget cars. Forget sports. This is almost dude code. People code. You want to talk? Yell? curse insult that's that's one thing as soon as you touch me it's game on and that's what happened again last night in martinsville virginia there was the touch logano and hamlin were talking obviously not disagreeing i got it they, they weren't seeing it eye to eye uh what happened on the racetrack but logano slapped hamlin on the shoulder and ran he slapped ran away quickly Hide behind his fellas. That was a puss move by Logano. I'm calling it. That was a Sally candy ass move to slap Hamlin and walk away. You want to slap the man? Stay there. Face him like a man. That was a cowardly move. Now, don't jump on everybody's back on Hamlin or Logano hiding behind the crew guys. The crew guys are automatically there. This is the car stop on pit road. The crews come out. So you get out of your car and everybody's there. Your guys are there. The other guys are there from the other team. The pit crews are there. But So you can't really fault uh, the, the crews for being there. It's part of procedure. It's what we do at the end of, the, uh, of these races. However, Hamlin slapped him, slapped him on the shoulder, and left. Got it. He wanted to put as many people as possible between Logano and Hamlin as he could. And then the scrum happens. And... D- Look, Joey, if you want to slap Hamlin on the shoulder, stick around. You're looking at him face to face. You guys were talking. You disagreed. You want to pop him in the shoulder, stay there. Face him like a man. Don't pop him and then walk away. And you know there's plenty of guys. And Logano laughed about it later. He shouldn't be laughing about it. He goes, Well, I guess I shouldn't have, you know, guess I shouldn't have done that. I guess I shouldn't have said. No kidding. We know that on the school ground. I'm a guy. We, we, you figure that out in kindergarten. As soon as you touch somebody else, yeah, it's game on. The rules don't change when you get into your 30s and 40s and you're a professional NASCAR driver. It's the same thing. You knew what you did was wrong. You knew going into it it was wrong. You knew it was a bad move. Don't tell me you discovered this right after the fact. You didn't. That was a that was a puss move by you uh, to do that and walk off. Come on. Hey, you Hamlin fan, Logano fan, whatever. These are just two guys. That's the course of action. That was pretty bad there. Now, the Penske crew member that did, did grab hold of Denny Hamlin and threw him backwards, he uh, found out later this afternoon that he will be suspended for one race. He threw Hamlin to the ground pretty hard. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't really have a problem with the crews getting involved. I, don't, I, I, don't, I think that goes under just general people code, too. If I'm anywhere with, say, five of my friends whether it be a concert, a sporting event, a public event, and one of my friends gets jumped or tackled by another guy, you're not going to necessarily engage in discourse and questions and find out what's going on. Your guys are just going to go after their guys. It's just how it is. I don't think NASCAR Cup racing gets held to any different standard than that matter, what it is. Those are guys on guys. This is just people. These are just guy rules more like human being roles. You could apply to women too. I think if, if, you know, a group of women is, is there, somebody attacks or confronts one of them, the other friends come to their defense, natural human nature. So naturally teammates on sports are going to do the same thing. We're not going to worry about the rules or penalties or things like that. I see one of my own getting jumped or attacked. I'm coming to that person's defense, period. And then nothing to do with pit crew or racing. This is just common people. How we get into scrums like that. It was all circles back to Joey Logano laying a hand on Danny Hamlin. Hamlin was fine with it till you touch me.
and that's it. And by the way, Hamlin, I think, did a spot-on Joey Logano impression on the NBCSN broadcast. That was pretty good. I won't attempt to do one, but uh, Hamlin had Logano down pretty good there as far as what he looked like, what he sounded like. But yeah, Logano slapped him and ran away and hid. And Logano, or Hamlin was ready to fight if he wanted to. Hamlin said, you want to go? Hamlin said, sure, I'm right here. Logano hiked it, and my money is on Hamlin if they ever actually do get into it. And the two of them have years and years of, uh, of non-cooperation, we'll call it, on the racetrack and uh, on pit road. So there's nothing, no love lost between these two anyway. I don't know about uh, retaliation in Texas, but they sure won't do any favors to everyone. Phoenix, absolutely, you could see something like that. And if it comes down to a championship, we've seen it before. Kenseth took him out, took Logano out before. Got uh, Kenseth suspended, but what he did, he was already out of the championship race anyway, and then he made sure Logano was not in the championship race. He got done what he needed to do. This could put you in a very dangerous position if you are eligible for the championship for or need to win a race. You are a target. You got to be careful with the way these playoffs are set up. Well, also at Martinsville, a lot of controversy came on Saturday with Todd Gilliland's scream over the radio. Uh, I won't quote it to perfection because I like this to be a family show, but Gilliland screamed to the effect, Thank you. I love you guys. Kyle Bush. You can stay in the blankety blank motorhome. Uh, Kyle Bush has been critical of David Gilliland over the last year and a half, even more so, of Kyle pretty much saying, "Dude, our stuff is not that slow. Get up on it and drive it. The the the, the truck's good enough." And you can see that when Kyle's in the truck, that thing nobody can keep up with him like that. But this is an event, um, or this is a situation where the kid is there uh, because he's funded. There's definitely an asking price. David Gill or uh, Todd Gilliland is a good young talent, a good young race car driver. But when you're a teenager in the truck series, there is funding behind you to get you there. Has to be there. And he said, I don't know if I'm going to be here in 2020. There's definitely some differences between the two guys. Uh, Gilliland, Todd really said he, I might be looking for next year. And it was the heat of the moment with the checkered flag. Well, what is what do you mean heat of the moment of what? Heat of the moment of what? Yeah, well, there's some there's a I wouldn't say differences between Kyle Bush and uh, Todd Gilliland. There's more like a chasm between Kyle Bush and Todd Gilliland. I can't expect Todd to be back in uh, KBM equipment in 2020. Probably when the contracts run out, his dad David Gilliland's money will go to somewhere else where Todd can continue his development. As good as Kyle Bush's trucks are. Sometimes the chemistry just didn't mix, and that certainly when Todd won the checkered, won the race in Martinsville, took the checkered flag, crosses the stripe, that justifies his own driving ability that he knows that he has, and he's had uh, his car owner in his ear for a long time about uh, going faster and getting back up on it. Kyle Busch, it's the best equipment that the trucks can buy. David Gilliland's money is buying his, Todd's way in there. I don't have, that's the way of the world nowadays. The only thing that I have a problem with is my old man didn't have the checks to, to write for me when I was 19 years old trying to race cars too. I had to figure out a way to do it on my own. Uh, I didn't have any kind of dad's money. I wish I did though. And if I did, I sure as heck would have taken advantage of that. But Todd Gilliland let the rough, let the rough edge uh, drag when he crossed the finish line at Martinsville, basically told his car owner where to go. Uh, so I'm expecting Todd Gilliland to go somewhere else for 2020 in the NASCAR truck series. Big finish for the Tri-Track Modifieds at Seekonk. This was on the track, but highly uh, irregular. And for the driving style that we we're about to see, Tri-Track series, great series, pays well throughout the field, uh, independently sanctioned. This race was at Seekonk, Massachusetts. Let's see, Matt Hirschman was leading at the white flag, and then Ronnie Silk made a move to his inside. The two drivers made uh, some side-to-side -side contact in turn two, bumping wheels as Silk 
uh, got under Hirschman, took the lead on the last lap. Hirschman then retaliated in the final corner. Uh, replays, I was not there, let me say that, showed that Hirschman put, he sent all four wheels onto the grass, basically sent it, and when he and Silk were enter three, that uh, put Hirschman up into the side of Silk, moved his car out of the way. Silk spun around, several cars crashed, and spun in avoidance, in avoidance of him. Matt Hirschman still the leader when they crossed the finish line, but he was uh, penalized for the results, handing the win to Chase Dowling, who was actually on the backstretch. He was fifth in line on the final lap, wounds up coming through the mess uh, with Dowling to win the race. And a statement from, um, from Matt Hirschman. Uh, I'll just quote it and read it. <clears throat> After watching video, I would like to release a statement in regards to the finish of uh, yesterday's, meaning Saturday's, Tri track event at Seacon Speedway upon the white flag when I rolled out of the throttle entering turn one. The 50 of Ron Silk came to my inside and we made side to side contact. With less than a lap to go in the heat of the moment, I drove into turn three across the curb, left lines through the grass and into the side of the 50. Uh, unfortunately, he spun and others received damage in the process. For this, I apologize to all involved. As a result, I was disqualified and this reflects poorly on myself and our team. In my racing career, I have been on both ends of situations like this, and all I can say is I hate being on this end even more than the other. I will learn from this and try to do better next time. I don't see this a whole lot out of Hirschman. He certainly doesn't have that type of rep reputation. His dad was aggressive, but you know, never really uh, you know, uh, pulling moves like this either. You know, it's really out of character. Well, often when big money Matt's leading the race, he's usually got a pretty good lead, and no one's close enough to him to try to make an attempt at a pass. But in this case, Ronnie Silk did. And when they got to turn three, Hirschman just sent it in there. Who was at the race? Who's watching that was on the race? Give me some comments below. I want to see uh, who was there. And did you know? Did you see Silk? Did you did you see Matt? What happened? What did you see? What did you think? Let me know in the comments. I want to know what you thought of the Haunted 100 finish. Uh, was it just racing or was Matt way over the line, which it seems to be? The tri track official said, dude, you can't not do this. So, uh, well, they took him out. They took the trophy and the check away, which was pretty big. Would have gone um, nice to uh, Bobby Horn's car and Ronnie Silk. <clears throat> I'd like to see or hear what you guys is, were there. Uh, especially those that were there, all my New England friends up at Seekonk, uh last Saturday, and it was Saturday, LJ, not Sunday. Maybe you look at ahead of schedule ahead of time so you could schedule your PTO time and get to Seekonk next time. Ah, you, geez, what are you doing, kid? Come on, I got all the excuses in the world since I'm down in North Carolina, but you're right up there. So, LJ, I gotta let you. I gotta love you on this one. But I, I was not at Seekonk on Saturday. I was here in North Carolina. Uh, and watching the Fox Sports 1 lose their feed at the end of the truck race, and everybody buried Fox Sports at the end of the truck race. I've had technical glitches on this show, and I don't have anywhere near the budget that Fox does, but it happens. I mean, one of my favorite races ever is the 1981 Talladega 500 where Ronnie Bouchard won, and everybody remembers we did not watch the end of that race on CBS but we listened to the end of it. Uh, now, granted, all kinds of technology has advanced so much um, since 1981, but it is still possible. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it's terrible, but I don't think you need to bail on Fox Sports and put everything on NBC because technical problems can happen with NBC too. It does. Remember when that Bush race at Bristol uh Maybe it was a nationwide race. I can't remember who was sponsoring the series, but we, they went to a commercial with like a lap to go, two laps to go at uh, at Bristol during the night race there. What, 10 years ago? Eight years ago? Something like that. It sounds like somebody just threw the wrong switch. It happens. I've had technical glitches on this show before too. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen to Fox. It's going to happen to NBC. It's going to happen to MAV TV. It'll always happen. Um, yeah, it sucks, but people... What are you going to do? I mean, I, I, when you're a Ronnie Bouchard fan and you live through the 81 Talladega 500, you can pretty much live through the rest of this stuff. I'm okay with it. You'll be fine. 
and Fox Sports will do a great job with the Phoenix uh, truck race. Trust me, it'll be fine, guys. It'll be fine. Big hat tip to Roger Penske, the captain was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That's the highest honor a sitting president can bestow on a U.S. citizen who's not in the military. So uh, hats off to the captain. And a couple of personal notes before we get out of here tonight. Yeah, I try to uh, have and uphold a professional image on the show all the time. You may have noticed a little bit of the stubble. Oh, Halloween is this week, and I'm toying with some facial hair for a costume and an outfit later this week. Don't worry. I'm usually a clean-shaven dude. This will be tightened up and smartened up for next Monday's show. And I want to say happy birthday to a former radio broadcasting teammate, Tim Leeming, the legend. His birthday is today as we do the show live October 28th. A uh, former broadcast associate at Racers Reunion Radio is he used to uh, be one of the anchors on the Goat Rodeo every Tuesday and a big part of Racers Reunion Radio. Big happy birthday to you, legend. I hope you're having a good time tonight and hope you can catch a replay of the podcast of the show because I texted him earlier as we do this live. He's out to dinner celebrating his birthday as he should be, so good for him. Happy birthday, legend. Always be part uh, of your family. It was great to work with you at Racers Reunion, and so good, so good to uh, get that broadcasting career as we all launched our racing shows from there. We will salute Motor Week Illustrated and Dave Despain with our Racer of the Week. So much happened off the track, so many personalities, so much energy, and I want to turn the Racer of the Week not to the mouths, not to the words, not to the shoving and fighting, but back to the racing, back to the driving. Racer of the Week, what defines a racer? Many things do, but when you come from 44th on the starting grid of the Eastern States 200 at Middletown, New York, and you wind up in victory lane. That, my friends, is a racer and one drive of the week. Stuart Friesen is the Speedway Report Racer of the Week. Congratulations, Stewie. Heck of a drive at Middletown, New York, coming from that far back and winning the 200 last night in Middletown, New York. Everybody, in between our broadcasts, keep up on the world of auto racing with SpeedwayReport.com. This broadcast and all of our past shows are uploaded on the site. We uh, got a great new article from Rhonda Beck this past week. It's a poem about short track racing as well as defines a little bit about her love for the sport. The Saturday night stuff, the dirt in your beer, folks, the, this, the, the, the short tracks, the pickup trucks. That local grassroots hometown feeling. You love your local short track? Head to SpeedwayReport.com and read Rhonda's latest article we posted this week. Hook up with me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds and at Racers Reunion. On Twitter, I'm at Speedway Report and at Speedway Pat. And these shows are also posted at RacersReunion.com in the forum. Don't forget to subscribe to the Speedway Report youtube channel big thanks to everyone on the facebook live feed for joining the conversation during the show tonight if you can hit a track uh near you before the season closes we're almost into november so catch a race anywhere you can i want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as americans in our daily life including the simple things like bench racing right here on a monday night freedom is not free and a veteran paid that bill for us, all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report. Take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter. I'm at Speedway Pat. Now, if you are on Facebook Live right now, head on over to the Drag Racing List page. Uh, Drag List Live is coming up in just a few minutes. Bill, John, and Barb got all the straight line talk, and they'll keep you straight and keep you in the news. We will be back live here on Facebook next week, uh, Monday, November something. One, two, three, four. Call it the fourth. Yeah, we'll call it the fourth. I think it is. But what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the NHRA in Las Vegas, the United States Formula One Grand Prix from Austin, NASCAR Cup and Xfinity in Fort Worth, 
and it's an actual NASCAR Formula One Texas showdown this weekend. Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy Halloween later this week, and I'll see you guys next week.